Okay, so uh, welcome to the third installment of Turntable Discussions. I've got the very rare pleasure of being with Mr. Al Mueller. I've known Al for, I guess I've been here, what, four times? This is my fourth time? Yep, we're in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, in his basement empire where he has a couple of layouts, but I'll let him tell you a little bit about that. So, uh, nice to be here with you and looking forward to a uh, brief conversation with you. Pleasure as always. Good, Tom. good. So, um, let me just interject that uh, the Civil War layout behind me uh, was inspired by me seeing Tom's layout in okay. Railroad Model Craftsman a number of years ago and uh, I owe a lot to him. Well, thank you. Thank you for that. Yeah. So, I, I was just going to say before, how did you get into model railroading now? What was, uh, how far back we going? Oh, going back to about age four or five, uh, my father uh, built me a, a Lionel layout secretly in the basement and gave it to me for Christmas. And uh, it was a thrill and I've been hooked on model railroading ever since. Uh, the Lionel layout until I was about 11 and then of course I traded all that valuable Lionel equipment for one HO train set. Right, uh, <laughs> right, same thing man, yeah, I get uh, that, yeah. Uh, of course I was out of it in my teens but after I got married in 67 uh, I bought a little N scale layout or train set and that was a real piece of junk. N scale has really come a long way yeah. <laughs> since then. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I've been in, uh, eight, I've had two great Northern HO layouts. Uh, this is my second one here. And hand-built switches and so on. Right. Which turned out to be a help in building the Civil War layout in back of me because uh, I built, I had to basically hand-build all of the stub switches for it. You know, as you're talking, I'm gonna go up and look at this as well. Okay. So. The first thing you so you got hooked into the Civil War when you saw my layout. That's when that's when Civil War started to come into you, or before? Uh, not really. I've always been a military historian, primarily ah. World War II and the Civil War. Okay. Uh, I travel. We travel out to Virginia for two weeks every year to visit my sister and her family who live out in uh, the Richmond area, and I always visit the uh, Civil War sites there, the battlefields, and. Uh, the little bit of railroad history that you can find out there now. And uh, I've always wanted to build a Civil War layout, but I didn't think it was possible because there was so little available. Right. When I saw your layout, it was like an inspiration. That's great. So I started hey, buying hey. Mantua Generals on eBay, and uh, with my friend John Smallshaw, who's recently passed away, uh, we started modifying those generals to improve their performance and uh, appearance. And I, I sort of got hooked on building locomotives for a while. Right. As you know. Yeah, and you uh, wrote your the only manual ever written around converting a man to a general. Yeah. To DCC I, and highly detailed. Yeah, the man to authentic. Man to a general rebuild book was was primarily to uh, ins hopefully inspire some of the members of our Civil War Yahoo group to uh, dig into those generals and, and, and get their feet wet in making them run better. And of course, you're, one of, you're a prime example of that. Uh, you've turned into just an excellent locomotive mechanic. Well, I tell you, man, that manual that was inspiration to me because I've always been extremely, well, maybe even obsessive with the Civil War and the, and the modeling. And then you come along and I thought, wow, I must be doing something right because the right people keep coming in when I need them. Oh. <laughs> and uh, between you and you know all the other guys, LeBron and DC and Brian, uh, it's been a real collective effort. Yes, and, and the comradeship and the cooperation of the group is just amazing. Right. It's, uh, it's really, really satisfying to, to know you're not alone in this, this craze we enjoy. Yeah, uh, and for those that might be watching, it's the uh, Civil War Railroads and Civil War Railroad Modeling Yahoo group. I actually have the name over here. Oh, good, 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 good. It is 
It is the American Civil War Railroad's Historical Society. Okay. And we would have a flyer. Yeah. Seldom used. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah, these days. And, uh, but the, yeah, so if you probably just go onto Yahoo groups and, and type in Civil War Railroads, you'll definitely find us. We've been around for about 12 years, I guess, early 2000s. Um, so, what is your most, do you have a favorite part of the hobby? Is it scratch building? Is it the locomotives? Is it running the trains? Is it, what? I guess uh, my favorite part of the hobby is uh, scratch building and kit bashing things. Right. Uh, this, this city over here, all, most of these buildings are kit bashed on the Great Northern layout. Uh, most of the buildings on the Civil War layout are either scratch built or they're uh, kit bashed. Yeah, matter of fact, I want to get a shot of this. Uh, no relation, of course. The uh, Mueller Machine Works. Oh no, no, no relation, no relation at all, really right? Coincidence. Right. Uh, yeah, so this, this is, is a, a kit. Laser, I think it's Laser Modeling Three puts the kit out. Right. Uh, I backdated it and mo and modified it uh, to become a uh, Civil War cannon carriage and limber carriage uh, manufacturing. They receive uh, cannon barrels from Tredegar Ironworks in Richmond. Right. They build the carriages and the wheels here and then fit the, the barrels to the, to the carriages. They also build limbers. Uh, prior to the war, they had they had built uh, the machinery for overhead uh, pulley systems for uh, manufacturing companies. Now here you can see, if you lift this stuff off and drop it on the floor, that the interior portion oh my contains God. all the equipment necessary for producing the overhead pulley systems, and they. They use that same equipment to produce the limbers and the cannon carriages. I love how you're able to just detach that wall. That is uh, fabulous, man. Yeah, it's a, it's a laser cut wood kit. Right. And it's really a very nice kit. The uh, the machinery and so on is scale structures limited mostly. Some of some of it it was been scratch built, but it has a. Uh, Steam-powered uh, overhead pulley system, which right. is not too readily apparent there. Right, and the thing is, too, that um, all those detailed parts are not from the kit. There's scale structures, you said. Scale structures limited. They're available right. from uh, from the the kit manufacturer as add-ons. Of course, everything is at extra cost these right. days. Right. Right. Beautiful. And unfortunately, their their steam boiler burned a roof off of it, off of its place here. So they're working on putting a oh, new that's roof the repairs on repairs on the other side. Yeah, accidents happen. So we just put nice. these items back on here. But uh, that's really, I guess, my favorite part of the hobby. Scenery is my least favorite part of the hobby, and I have to be in the, the proper mood. The thing I want it. you to highlight to folks here is that you have the only place in the world, I think, that has an operating hand through an HO scale. Uh, Quick well, recovery there. Well, it, it's operating, and it, it's... Uh, it, it powers the frog with a correct electrical uh, current, but when you throw the switch, these are precision wow. scale uh, switch stands, and I modified them to to, to throw the uh, the power routing into the frog as well. Right. In fact, the the how-to 
do that uh, was presented at a clinic in Chattanooga a couple years ago. At the Civil War Art at, Model. At our yeah. Civil War Annual Convention. Yeah, yeah. And it's available as a, as a file now on our website. Our website. Yeah. yeah. Cool. But it does, uh, it does uh, power route the switches. That's fabulous. That's, these are brass, are they, or no? Yes, they they, are these are brass switch stands. Yeah. Yeah, I've included a, a load of uh, the harp stands on my lap, but they're all aesthetic for now. Nothing actually functions. It's all tortoise and throttle thrown. That's so cool. That is a Mantua General rebuilt as the locomotive of Virginia. It has what's called ankle rails on the side, which dates back to a, a build date of about 1852. Ah. And it's so colorful. And, uh, locomotives of that period were extremely colorful. And uh, although the equipment looks dirty, the boxcars and so on, the locomotives were almost always spotless. They were cleaned at the, I believe, at the end of every run. The, the engineers and the firemen were, were very proud of their machines. Right. In fact, some locomotive engineers had their own picture mounted on the side of the cab. That's funny. Yeah, t that's right, because the locomotives at that time were pretty much assigned to a, one engineer, correct? That is correct. Yeah. Yep. So hence they took special pride in uh, in that particular locomotive. Yep. That, that building you just uh, photographed there, the kitchen and uh, laundry room, I'm sorry, the laundry, the kitchen and laundry room is an actual building uh, that resides now at City Point, Virginia, where Grant's, uh, General Grant's headquarters was. Uh, I, I scaled it from there from a visit to City Point and uh, scratch built that structure. And you have this entire area, which is still in uh, the planning stage, or? Yes, yes. The, this was originally intended to be a, uh, a, this is the union side, or was the union side of the layout. Right. And this was intended to be a, a supply dump, or supply warehouse over here. Okay. I've recently changed my mind because I've uh, acquired a model of the, the uh, Western and Atlantic Railroad's locomotive, Yona, which uh, Jerry Dykstra has produced in 3D and is avail will be available on Shapeways. And uh, that's inspired me to change this over to be uh, the town of Saltville, Virginia. Oh, yeah. Because Saltville su supplied a lot of salt, an absolute necessity for curing meat as well as human consumption during right. the Civil War, to every state in the Confederacy. And uh, every state had their own salt works at Saltville. And they would send locomotives and boxcars to uh, load it up with salt and take back to their home states. So they did have their own facility there for their yes. own railroad. For for their own states, yes. Own state, right? Because it was beyond. Yes, yes, yes. Interesting. Wow, that one town in Virginia. Yes. That must have been a busy little town. It was during the Civil War. It was very busy. It, it suffered two Union attacks, both of which were driven off. But uh, very interesting. I spent a day there last year uh, getting getting uh, as mu as much information as I could. In fact, the the locomotive Texas from the Great Locomotive Chase was sitting in Saltville, loading salt when George, when Atlanta fell. Right. I recall that So it never made story. it back to the WNA depot in Atlanta. Right. Right. So Saltville in here. Yes. And hopefully, if I can replicate the salt works. Well, we're going to close this one uh, episode out. Al, it was such a good time hanging out here with you and talking to you about your layout. So uh, all the best, and I'm looking forward to getting back to working with you in a few minutes here. Okay, let's get the rest of these locomotives tuned up for you. All right.